Hey everybody, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake, and today I'm gonna to talk about the best overall software for graphic design. If you're just tuning into the channel, I usually do graphic design videos a couple of times a week, but usually on Mondays. So the type of software you're gonna use as a graphic designer is often gonna depend on what it is you're actually trying to do. So if you're doing image manipulation, for example, then you wanna use something like Adobe Photoshop. It is the gold star industry standard for photo manipulation. However, there are alternatives that you can use. You can use some Corel products like Corel Painter if you're gonna be doing digital painting as opposed to using Photoshop. You can use Zara. And for open source, the best thing available is probably GIMP. But again, there are some other alternatives, including Pixelator. If you're primarily gonna be doing photo retouching and work that's related to photography because you're doing something like editorial graphic design where you just kind of want to do some retouching for stuff that's going to go in a magazine or a layout or a brochure, then maybe you don't necessarily need Photoshop. You might want to go ahead and you might want to use Adobe Lightroom, which is a great retouching program, but alternatively, you could use something like Picasa or you could even use um, Apple's product, while it's still around anyway, Aperture, which will later be uh, retired in favor of a new app called Photos, but I'll cover that in another video later. If you're going to be doing logo design and brand development, then what you're really going to want to use for that is a vector program like Adobe Illustrator. Again, Adobe Illustrator is probably the best overall program for this, but there are alternatives that you can use such as Corel Draw, which is another vector manipulation program. In my best free graphic design software video, I do talk about the fact that you could use Inkscape as an alternative. There are also some other programs out there like SVG Editor, but I'm not as familiar with them. The top three that I'm going to recommend if you're doing any type of logo design or vector illustration are going to be Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw, and Inkscape. If you're doing print design and layout, if you're going to be doing things like brochures, uh, book covers, magazines, the internal pages for an EPUB, then you're going to want to use Adobe InDesign. Now, alternatively, you could use Quark Express, and Quark has made some uh, tremendous leaps and bounds since back in the day, but I would still say that, especially now that we have version CC, that Adobe InDesign is actually ahead of Quark in many ways. Uh, at some point, I'll do a comparison video about the two. I've actually written a ton of articles about this in the past, but I'll go ahead and do a video at some point. The primary reason that you want to use Adobe InDesign or Quark Express for your page layout and so on is going to have to do with the fact that unlike Photoshop and Illustrator, InDesign is really made to handle multi-page documents. Moreover, it can even handle branding schemes for you to go ahead and set up something like the trifold business card and all the other print collateral in the same document to go ahead and make sure that you're appropriately matching the fonts, the color palettes, and everything you would need to. And then you can still print these files off individually as PDFs um, and produce them and you can actually package the whole thing and make things very simple for your clients. That pretty much covers the design quote unquote holy trinity of um, you know handling uh, image manipulation, logo design and print production. And again, usually you would use Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign respectively for those tasks. But there are other tasks that you might need to do as a graphic designer and I can make some recommendations for that. If you're going to be doing motion graphics, for example, there are a couple of different programs you can use just depending on your level of skill and what you want to do. For basic, very simple motion graphics, you can actually use the animation panel in Adobe Photoshop. And it's actually gotten some great improvements and is very similar to some other programs. It did borrow some things from Adobe After Effects, which is the overall best program that I can really recommend for motion graphics design. Um, you could theoretically also use Adobe Premiere Pro if you're doing very, very basic motion graphics for something like your YouTube video and you want to do a fly out or a fly in. I've done this several times in these videos that you've seen. So you can do uh, fly ins, fly outs, titles, openers, uh, just different things right in Premiere Pro without having to use After Effects. But if you want to do um, really great motion graphic intros like the ones you've seen me do for AFX Films and Digital Com, then you can actually use uh, Adobe After Effects to do that, and it's not nearly as intimidating as you might think. Alternatively, and what's been done in the past, especially in the early days of the web, was you could use Adobe Flash for motion graphics, and many people still use that today for motion graphics and animation. In fact, uh, the TV series Johnny Test is one of the actual uh, TV series that was done completely 
in Adobe Flash to my knowledge. So you might wanna check that out and look into that. Now, alternatively, you could use Apple Motion. I do have that installed here. At some point, I'll do tutorial videos for both After Effects and Apple Motion, but it's actually uh, very comparable to After Effects. Uh, what I do like about Adobe After Effects, obviously, is it integrates very well with Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe Illustrator. So I would tend to take advantage of that, and that's what I would recommend you do as well. As I said, for GIFs, banners, and even uh, simple video projects, you could use Adobe Photoshop. Uh, you could actually even still use Adobe Flash for that still. But there is another program that you can use, Adobe Edge Animate. Specifically, if you want to integrate with uh, websites in Dreamweaver and Muse, you can use Adobe Edge Animate, and it can actually handle exporting HTML5-based animation as opposed to just uh, animated GIFs or Flash animation. So that's definitely an option you should take advantage of because HTML5 is universal, it works in all devices, it works in all browsers, and it's really cool what you can actually accomplish with it. So I would look into that if I were you and give that a try if you have a Creative Cloud membership. Again, there are some alternatives to these Adobe programs, and I did throw Apple out there, but one more I'm gonna give you for the motion graphics and animation side um, is going to be uh, just kind of a few. Um, I'm gonna recommend Toon Boom, and I'm going to recommend that you could actually do some of it with a program uh, called Anime Studio. It's really intended to be more of an animation program, but you can actually use it for motion graphics if you want to. And it's extraordinarily affordable at the entry level. I think it's about $79. I'll leave a link in the description below. Web design is something that more and more graphic designers are finding themselves pulled into instead of their traditional print background or their background doing just simple uh, banner ads and assets for web. They're finding themselves pulled more and more into web, much in the same way that a lot of them are getting a little bit into video with having to do um, stuff involving doing simple motion graphics for YouTube or YouTube thumbnails. They're getting more into the video side and DSLR photography is helping out with that as well. So it's not surprising that all this stuff is starting to really merge together because brands are wanting a more integrated experience. With that in mind, if you're a new designer and you're trying to break into web coming from a print background or from a uh, visual editing background as far as something like Photoshop, then I recommend Adobe Muse because Adobe Muse does not require you to actually code. It allows you to focus on the actual design component of web design and focus on creating a great seamless experience for your users, focus on things like layout and typography and being organized and not so much on the technical aspects of it. You get to focus on visual presentation, um, hierarchy and user interaction, which is all very important. Coders actually despise Adobe Muse and I cover some of that in my why uh, coding is not web design video. Uh, if you want, you should definitely check that out. I think there's some useful information there. But the bottom line is that if you need a way to deliver a website for a client, especially if you're working with an older client who doesn't understand technology and coding and is gonna want constant revisions or stand over your shoulder or your art director or creative director is like that, if it's a simple website that's less than 20 pages, it actually might be more worthwhile to do it in Muse, even if you can code. But if you are gonna code, there are some great programs that you can use. Notepad++ is an open source free text editor, and I mention it in my uh, free uh, design software video. And you should you know, definitely look at that if you want to get stuff for free. But you know, this, despite being a free product, is absolutely fantastic if you are a hand coder and you want full control over everything you're doing, you wanna be able to stay organized, you want to be able to do um, find and replace very easily, um, you like using shortcut commands, then this is definitely a text editor for you and I highly recommend it. If you need something free and open source on the WYSIWYG side, then I would definitely recommend Composer. Composer is actually really good. It is a more or less a lightweight, I would say, version of Dreamweaver. It's comparable to older versions of Dreamweaver. But if you want the best of both worlds, if you want to be able to do what I usually do, which is do a uh, split view, and you like to be able to have your own uh, code library and snippets that you've already done um, so that you could use those assets again or use that custom um, CSS that you created, then Dreamweaver managed that very well. It has built-in FTP. Uh, file organization. You can go ahead and you can actually use it with your uh, LAMP setup if you um, have a web server or if you want to use WAMP or MAMP, which is, um, you know, Mac, uh, Apache, Linux, PHP, that kind of thing. Um, you know, if you want to do any of that, 
then Dreamweaver is a really great inclusive all-in-one solution for doing web design. Regardless of whether you're a WYSIWYG person or a coder, it can be very valuable to you. Now, a lot of coders want to stick with something like Notepad++ or whatever, but even as a coder myself, going back 15 years, I really like Adobe Dreamweaver because I like the feature set and I like the fact that it helps me stay organized and stay on top of things. I also love the live preview window and just different things that help me make sure that everything is the way that I want it to be before um, I have to go to the live site. I like the fact that I can integrate it with things like WordPress and that I can actually manage that um, with a test web server right there on my laptop. Finally, let's talk about uh, video. Now, traditionally speaking, graphic designers usually don't have to do anything with video, but if you're an in-house graphic designer, there's a chance you could find yourself doing any number of things. So I wanted to give you the opportunity to have a little bit of information on video applications that you can use. Some of the best applications out there for video editing are gonna be Adobe Premiere Pro, which if you're on Creative Cloud, you have access to it anyway, uh, Apple Final Cut Pro, of course, and Avid. Uh, there's also Sony Vegas. Those are the creme de la creme and they are the best. If you want more info on those individually, you should definitely check out my best video editing software video. But there are some free solutions and I think I haven't done a free video editing software video. I should probably do that. But anyway, you can use uh, Windows Movie Maker if you're on Windows, obviously, and you can use um, Apple's iMovie if you are a Mac user. So those are some options that are available to you if you have to dabble in video. I personally recommend uh, working within uh, Adobe if you can. Uh, if Adobe Premiere Pro is too expensive for you or you don't have Creative Cloud, you can always get Adobe Premiere Elements. And speaking of um, Elements, if you are on the visual side of things and you need something that's really affordable and still very good and is still professional grade software, you can get Adobe Photoshop Elements and it can handle a lot of heavy lifting beyond what you might actually believe. 90% of people don't use all the power of Photoshop anyway, so you really could probably get by on Adobe Photoshop Elements at least when you're getting started. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the best software for graphic design. If you guys have any recommendations on software that I didn't cover in this video, go ahead and leave that in the comments section below. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other great graphic design videos on this channel. And as always, you guys, thanks for watching.